Yes. How does how does this industry? Hold on. Before I get to that, uh-huh. I, w- I, w- I want you to talk about. And this is going to segue straight into what I was about to go to, but I won't. Where did you come from and how did the opportunity present itself for you to be who you are? Take us through it. Um, Meaning to get into the business? Right. So I grew up in San Francisco. I I was going to Cal State Hayward, um, which is also in Northern California. And really, I had no idea what I was going to do as a career, I just knew I wanted to be a successful businesswoman. Mm. So I was going to school to be a successful businesswoman. I ended up in advertising. Um, But while I was in college, there was a friend that was recruiting girls for the Miss Black California pageant. Mm. And so me and some of my friends, we were like, whatever, we'll do it. What what you doing the pageant? (laughs) You know how how that that (laughs) works. So we did this pageant. And I had no idea what I was going to do for the talent part because, mm. you know, I don't sing. Well, I do sing, but it sounds terrible. Mm. We all I, do. I, you know, I, I don't dance. Well, I dance, but it ain't nothing special. Mm. It's special to me, you but to nobody else. You know, yeah. uh, yes, I groove. Um, so I didn't know what I was going to do for the talent. And um, I was talking with my mom and my aunt. And so we came up with this idea that I was would do a monologue from the play um, for colored girls who who considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. That's the name of the the play. So I took a monologue from that play and I performed that in the pageant. Mm -hmm. And one of the judges of the pageant was a producer that was casting for a stage play that they were getting ready to take on tour. And after the pageant, he asked me if I would be interested in auditioning for this play. Mm. And again, had no idea about nothing. Not, none of it. I was like, so what do you do at an audition? What do you do? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Yo, so your name is what now? <laughs> All right. So he gave me the information to come to the Black Repertory Theater, which was in um, Berkeley, California. So I I show up at the theater when he tells me to come. He told me to bring a picture and bring a resume. I was like, okay. So the night before my audition, I took a picture. Now, this is how long ago it was. I I had my college roommate take a picture with the Polaroid camera. So I... (laughs) Yep. Yep. So that's what I brought for my picture to my audition. And my resume was a regular working resume. How many pictures did you take, though? Just, uh, I just brought one. I mean, I probably took several. I swear. And I had on way too much makeup because oh. I didn't know what I was doing. I did my own makeup. It was like pink up here and <laughs> pink cheeks. As I said, friend, love. Terrible. That ain't nothing but good love. That ain't, that ain't nothing. You know. Terrible. Soulful chick. That's yeah, all. Very soulful and very sassy. Mm. Um... So I go with my picture. I go with my regular working resume. I was working at the Marriott Hotel. Mm. I had worked at Avis, McDonald's. So that was my resume I brought to my acting audition. Debut. Yes. Right. The first time acting, first time. First time doing any of it. So I get to the theater, and the lobby is full of other actors that are auditioning. Mm-hmm. And they're like real actors. Like yeah. they've been studying theater. Right. So they're like doing their theater exercises, yeah. like mm, humming, mm-hmm. stretching, doing all this weird You're looking shit. Around, like, like, nah, 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 doing all this weird stuff. And I'm just like looking around like, ooh, these people are weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they finally call my name. I go in and I meet the director and the playwright. And so they give me some material to read. And so I take it and I read the material. And the director, who was like super artsy, Mm -hmm. a thespian who had studied at ACT in San Francisco, he wore Birkenstocks chewing on a a liquid tree bark thing. Mm -hmm. So he was super, he almost looked like a homeless man, Mm -hmm. but he was just super artsy. Yeah. And he changed my life. Wow. His name was Paul Roach. And um, so he gave me the material, I read it. He gave me some notes. He was like, look, uh, this character is really sassy. Um, so can you read it again? And this time, you know, just do it. Put sassy. that sad friend in there. Exactly. <laughs> what I used to get in trouble for all the time, being mm-hmm. too sassy and flip with my mouth. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I could do that. Right. So I easy. read it again. Psst, easy. <laughs> and they called me that night and offered me the part in the play. What? And I was 
like, what? I was like that. <laughs> Mama! Yes! Ah! Yes! Mama, they offered me a part in this play and blah, blah, blah. Should I go? Can I go? And she was like, yes. Mm. Go. When and is how, that how ever going to happen to you? I was um, like 20. Okay. I was like 20. and um, But I left school. I left school to do this tour. And um, the blessing was Paul Roach, mm -hmm. who was our director, he toured with us. And he started training us in the craft of acting. Wow. Introducing me to all the theater grades, the books to read, um, the movies to watch. And I just got bit by the bug. And mm. I loved it. And I was like, this is what I do. Mm. This is what I do right here. And I just kept studying and kept doing it and moved to L.A. after the, that tour ended after about two years. And the rest is oh my her goodness. story. So I like what you did with that her story. Yes. Um, but as I was reading just things about you, right? Mm -hmm. And if that story isn't a perfect indication of just having faith. Yes, absolutely. Faith. Absolutely. And, you know, my father's a preacher, so I come from the cloth. Mm -hmm. As they said, I know what's right from wrong. I just don't always do right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But, you know, he who cast the first stone. Um, I would never. You know, the thing is, you can't have faith and fear right. at the same time. Right. And in this phase of my life, mm -hmm. I'm operating all off faith. Yep. And just like you, you just jumped out and said, you know what? It's going to be what it's going to be. And God take the wheel. Like, yeah. let me, no Tesla auto ride. Like, this is cruise control. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do my part with yeah. preparing. You give me the instructions. I'm going to do that. You did that. And it led you to who and what you are right now, what That's you right. represent. And I'm big on that. So I want you to speak on um, just the energy. You know, you're big on manifestation. How do we get to that point, too? Um, again, it's, it is all just grounding in faith mm -hmm. and um, just knowing that my presence here is the gift, mm. right? So I go into spaces not looking for what am, what am I going to get out of mm -hmm. this? What can they give me? What, it's more of what can I give them mm. in this moment with you right here, right now? What can I give you that is going to make you right. just happier or more peaceful right. or something, whether it's a smile or a laugh or a joke or mm. whatever it is? Um, what can I give? And I and I operate in that space. Mm. And so I'm very protective and it's been developing even more as I've gotten older yeah. because, you know, you, you get jaded at times and you just feel like, um, you know, you're always fighting, fighting, yeah. fighting. And no then results. just as you, yeah. And yeah. as you get older, you're like, just relax mm. because whatever is, whatever is yours and whatever is, is, is meant to be, it's going to happen if you relax right. and let it and stop trying to fight mm -hmm. for it to be something that you think it should be. Mm -hmm. So like that time in my life when I've just felt free and excited to just jump and take an opportunity, I was just, I was just that. I was just free. Mm. And there's no better feeling in the world or no better place to be than free. And you know, when we try to control stuff or make it the way we think it should be, then we're we're just fighting and we're not free. You're forcing, you're forcing, we're forcing a it. Yeah. In a flathead, a flathead, and yeah. a, a Philip head, and it's just it's just making. And it's I'm just not this. there anymore. Yeah. I'm just not there anymore. I just I feel more free now than I have. You know, in many years, like I feel like I'm I'm that young again, mm. and. All the opportunities are, opportunities are just opening up, and I'm just like taking advantage of them as they're coming. Right. 